Good morning. Thought for the day on the 18th of December. I've chosen to reflect this morning on a carol written in 1984. The words and the music are by John Rutter and it's called The Candlelight Carol. Apparently his inspiration was taking, taken from a painting called The Nativity at Night by a Dutch painter, Geertgen, around 1490. And you can find a picture of it on the web. To our 21st century eyes, it's a rather strange painting. Much of it is in semi-darkness. The baby Jesus at the centre is bathed in a golden glow and Mary gazes lovingly at her baby. All the lights mentioned in the chorus of the carol form part of the picture. Candlelight, angel light, firelight and star glow shine on his cradle till breaking of dawn. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, angels are singing, the Christ child is born. In the painting, the candlelight is feeble as Joseph tries to protect the flickering flame. Angels crowd round the cradle but merge with the animals. Shepherds in the background in the fields huddle round a fire and stars stand out against the night fire illuminated by a single angel. But none of these sources of light compare to that surrounding the Christ child who is to be the light of the world. The first verse of the carol reads, How do you capture the wind on the water? How do you count all the stars in the sky? How can you measure the love of a mother or how can you write down a baby's first cry? David Adam writes that the ingredients for Christmas are simplicity and mystery. And the questions in the first two lines of this carol express the mystery of life itself. They echo words which open the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said, let there be light. But there is no way we can capture the movement of the Holy Spirit in bringing new life and light. The prophet Isaiah in chapter 40 verse 26 writes, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. No matter how much we think we know about the origins of the universe or how technologically brilliant we are as a species, how little do we really grasp? Our Creator God is awesome in the real meaning of the world and in his majesty and mystery he knows our limitations and speaks to us in a way we can understand. He comes to us in the new life expressed in a tiny baby. As a child is born, there is a tense moment as the parents wait for its lungs to fill and take its first breath and scream the first of many cries. He, she's alive. Welcome to our world. Here is both the mystery and the simplicity David Adam writes about. How can God enter our world as a baby? Life itself is a miracle. God becoming man in Jesus is quite mind blowing, but simply true. He entered our world with no fanfares or trappings. 
he entered in the simplicity of an animal shelter, his riches contained in the immeasurable depths of his mother's love. Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Those words in the chorus take me back to school carol concerts, to a teacher trying to explain what they mean, glory to God in the highest, and how to pronounce them properly. I remember some smart Alec questioned, do angels sing in Latin then? Who knows? But why include them in a 20th century carol? Because it seems to me that these words are both universal and eternal. Whatever language you speak at Christmas, Christians drawn round the world singing those words, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo, in a variety of carols. We join in praise to our living God. We also know that many years ago, for many, Latin became the official language of the church. So we're joining our voices today with those down the ages in worshipping God in praise of that moment when time touched eternity. The language itself is immaterial. The act of worship, the praising heart is everything. The following two verses of the carol develop this theme fusing time past and time present. John Rutter includes the majestic religious language of the church, saviour, redeemer, Godhead incarnate, words which can only touch on the mystery of God and all he has done and is doing to bring us back into a loving relationship with him. They're the words which need some explanation on our journey into faith, possibly never fully understood. But then what a contrast. Take to heart the picture painted in the last lines, Mary cradling her baby, singing him to sleep, a child with its mother that first Christmas day. And this is how much God loves us and more, and that we can know for ourselves. I was remembered, reminded of the last lines of a poem by Joan Brocklesby. Worship him, caroling angels, dance to him, sinner and king, for here at his lowly manger is the heart of everything. May you experience the mystery and the simplicity of God with us at Christmas and always. If you're able, light a candle with me as we pray. Lord, as I light this candle, remind me you are warm and loving and that you call me to live in your light. God of light, be with those who are in dark places. Be with those who are hungry or hurting. Be with those who are in danger. Be with those who today will die. As I light this candle, kindle the flame of your love in me. Let me shine where you send me, where people need me, where you cry. In Jesus' name, Amen. And a happy Christmas to you all. God bless.